Hi, BBs. Welcome to the very first ever mini episode of Beauty and the Bitch. I'm Morgan, and I'm here to hit you guys with a little mini content and a little bit of information to keep you going along our journey together. So, so far, we have three episodes out. We did The Magicians, season one, on our very first inaugural episode. On our second episode, we did The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. And for our third episode, we've covered The Flash, kind of the first two and a half seasons, since we kind of did it before the mid-season uh, finale sort of situation was happening with season three. So, we will definitely be getting back to The Flash for all you Flash lovers out there. Possibly... Uh, before the fourth season starts. I don't know. We'll we'll play with that and see what happens. But I just wanted to keep you posted on some things you could look forward to and just some other things in general. So just so you know, things that we have coming up for you to look forward to, we're going to continue our Lord of the Rings saga. We have a Two Towers episode. In the much further future, we have a Return of the King episode. We have a Game of Thrones episode to get you super caught up and prepared for this summer beginning of season, I think it's season seven. We have a Stardust episode, Neil Gaiman Stardust. We're going to be talking Westworld and also on the horizon. I'm so excited about this. We are going to jump into the magical world of Harry Potter, starting with the Sorcerer's Stone. So that'll be a long, arduous journey for us where we'll kind of space the content out. We don't want to Harry Potter you out, which if you're me, is not a thing, but like for some people, they don't want to just be inundated with Harry Potter. And we hear you, we see you, we're going to spread that shit out. So that's some things that you can be looking forward to. We're maybe going to try this thing where in between our content-based episodes, we can do many episodes just to keep you going and to have some other things to look forward to. Currently, our schedule looks like bi-weekly episodes of our content. So that will be an episode coming out every other Monday for you. And really, because Mickey and I both have full-time jobs and we have a lot of other things on our plate that we do with our lives, that's really the best method that we can give you quality content that we can feel proud of. So for now, that's what we're going to do. And then perhaps on the Mondays in between, we will release a mini episode where we talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Um, it can be a lot more topical since we record a lot of our episodes much further in advance than you're going to be hearing them. In fact, almost all those episodes I just mentioned have been recorded with the exception of Westworld and Harry Potter. So we've been working really hard to get a backlog of content together, especially because currently right now, Mick is on a work trip and then next week I go on a work trip. So for situations like that, we want to make sure we have things built up in our vault, if you will. But this would be a nice way for us to kind of get more in touch to to talk about things that are a little on topic at the moment. So I hope that you like it and that it gives you a little tidbit of something in between all the little nuggets of goodness that we have for you. All right. First of all, we would really like to say thank you to our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We only have three episodes out and we have over 650 downloads. We could not be more happy about that. That just blows my mind. I'm so excited. So please keep doing what you're doing. Please tell your friends. Please subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss anything. Please take a moment to go on and rate us. If you guys have an iPhone, which this is really the only thing that I know because I have one, if you have to search the podcast out and then click on the review tabs, if you subscribe to it, I don't think you can review it from your like subscribe section. So you actually have to go to the little magnifying glass and search us out. So yeah, do that. You know, subscribe us on your grandmother's cell phones because they don't necessarily know how to do that and don't care. But hey, that would help us out. And you know what? Maybe your grandma really wants to learn about Grinder because I really think that was informative and we have a lot of things to learn and we can learn them all together. I also have some corrections. Um, my friend, Dr. Comic Book Nerd, pointed out to me that in the game that we played of The Flash, where I asked Mickey um, different Flash villains and such, that Star Sapphire was in fact a Green Lantern villain in addition to the answer that I provided. So points to Mickey. Don't let his ego get too big. If you guys have any other qualms, questions, or queries, things that you want to 
talk about or corrections, you can always shoot that over to our email. It's beautyandthebeepodcast at gmail.com. Or you can get on our website and hit us up, let us know. Or if you're my friend, you can just send me a Slack and be like, girl, you was wrong. That's also acceptable. All right, I want to hit you with a little segment to help you get to know me a little better and just to kind of talk about life a little bit. I'm calling this segment, What Did You Ever Do With Your Life? Right? What did you? I don't fucking know. Not much, I bet, if you're like me. All right, so what did I ever do with my life? What's on my bookshelf right now? I feel like this is really pertinent information because a person's bookshelf really says a lot about them. So what do I keep on my bedside table? What's going on in my life? I am one of those people who can't be satisfied with one particular book. I need several books to keep me satiated because I like to flip flop. You never know what kind of book you're going to be in the mood to read. Do you want to read a nonfiction? Do you want to read a travel book? Do you want to read a love story? You know, if you're like me, you don't know. You don't know until you get there. So what's on my bookshelf right now? I have currently A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, which is a really great book about uh, the, the tagline is rediscovering America on the Appalachian Trail. And kind of the cover of it is this beautiful picture of the woods. And there's just like a bear, like a really close up picture of a bear, like he was trying to take a selfie and he was like, there he is. So that's pretty cute. But uh, Bill Bryson is kind of a comedy travel adventure writer. If you're into that kind of thing, he is hilarious. And this book is amazing. And I totally recommend it. I have two other books on my shelf right now. I have... Dragonfly in Amber, which is a novel by Diana Gabaldon, and it is the second book in the Outlander series. So I read the first book, and it was fabulous and fantastic, and lots of sex and romance and adventure, and even a little bit of magic. So kind of a lot of good things in there. I'm really daunted by this series. It's all the books are really big. This book has like 950 pages in it and they all do. And there's like 75,000 of them. And really, I started the first book because I wanted to watch the show on stars, which like I don't have stars, but I was definitely going to find someone to mooch a login off of for. But anyways, and then I got super caught up and now I just want to read the book series because there's nothing like a show spoiling a book series for you. But anyways, but the show looks fantastic and the first book was great. So I'm very much looking forward to Dragonfly and Amber. I've only read a couple chapters, but it's my like romance fantasy adventure novel when I feel like that. I'm also reading The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova and it's a really intriguing book that kind of is a modern day modern-ish day historical telling a retelling of Dracula and so not like Bram Stoker's Dracula they mentioned Bram Stoker's Dracula but this is kind of like Dracula like you never knew him because he was a real person what um so it's really intriguing and it's kind of very scholarly like sometimes you need a book that's written really dumbly so that you can just kind of like check out you know and and this is not that book this book is is pretty fancy but i would definitely recommend it if you're into vampires and um very eloquent speech so that's what's on my bookshelf what kind of things am i watching on tv right now what did i ever do with my life i just finished Okay, let me preface this. My sweet baby husband, Aaron, uh, he, he doesn't like the kind of trashy TV that I can enjoy because, it, he, I don't know, he'd rather like play with tiny miniatures and paint them or whatever, which is totally cute and perfect. But I have to like get in little morsels of me time, usually on Saturdays, because that's when he works um, and I don't. That's the only day of the week that I have that's kind of my own. So I will kind of like find little time frames to just binge watch trashy things on those days. So I just finished Gossip Girl and this has been a really big endeavor for me. I don't know if you guys have seen Gossip Girl. It's aight and it's pretty good trash TV if you're into that. So um, spoilers, 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 spoilers for Gossip Girl. If you don't want to hear a Gossip Girl spoiler, it's about to happen right now. Quit listening. Dan was Gossip Girl? I mean, oh my god, like, I can kind of see it and it kind of makes sense, but also they are really going out on a limb and stretching that shit thin, which is kind of the whole premise of that show. Anyways, and then Serena ends up with him and they get married. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Whatever. But Blair and Chuck for life. 
What else am I watching? Oh, I'm watching Rain, which is a CW show based on Mary Queen of Scots, who is a historical figure that I'm kind of obsessed with. And the first season of that show was fantastic. And I'm on the third season. That's the newest season they've added to Netflix. Season two was also like kind of good, but like really not that good. Season three is terrible. So bad. But it's almost kind of like a train wreck you can't quit looking at. And then also there's like fabulous clothes. And then you're like, who is Mary going to have sex with next? It's just, they just, they trap you. They just get you in there. They trap you and you have to know. I also, trashy TV that I watch without my husband is The Royals, which is a TV show on the E! Network, which is like, whatever, I guess they do TV shows now. It's actually like really fucking good. Like it's trashy for sure, but like I would recommend it to like anyone. And it's kind of about the modern, like it's not a real family, but like a modern day royal family of England and The head of the family is played by Elizabeth Hurley. She's like the queen. And then the guy who plays, one of the guys who plays her son is like, oh, he was like one of the fucking kids from the Chronicles of Narnia movie. And he's very regal looking. And oh man, he shaped up into a beautiful human. So there's that. Lots of, lots of, lots of eye candy. So that's a really good show. And there's lots of like sex and mystery and intrigue and... The seasons are very short. I think if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch probably the first season, maybe the second season on there. I think they have like an exclusive deal. So when the show goes to streaming for free, it goes to Amazon Prime. So check out The Royals. I'm also watching with my husband, um, Arrow. And so we're a little behind on Arrow because I kind of go in and out of like caring so much about it. I don't love it as much as I love The Flash, but it I'm we're on season 3 on Netflix is where we watch it right now and season 3 is actually shaping up to be pretty good. It's pretty good, I think. So I'm I'm pretty into it right now, so I'm glad that it's getting a little more back on track for me. What else is going on? We are just over a week out from that big Oscars gaffe that happened. Did you guys see that? Oh, it was painful. I mean, I feel like what happened is what should have happened, that Moonlight won. I haven't watched that movie yet, but I really, really want to. And everything that I've heard about it, everything I've seen about it, it's the kind of film and the caliber and sort of messaging, the kind of thing that deserves to win Best Picture. So I'm very excited about that. But oh man, was it not so painful to watch the La La Land crew get up there and pour their little hearts out and then gracefully give their awards away. And like the look on Emma Stone's face, she was like, oh my God, oh my God, it was amazing. And my husband and I, we, we like the Oscars because we like to watch a lot of movies and we also like fancy clothes and, you know, seeing our favorite stars talk about stuff and it's cute. But we always do a thing where we each, we tally up like who gets the most answers right and we never do very good. But this year, Aaron got nine correct answers out of something like 27, maybe 24. So not very good. And I got 10 correct answers. So winning. There was another really painful thing recently and stuff I listened to. If you guys have ever listened to Doug Loves Movies, it's Doug Benson's podcast where he plays games with celebrities and comedians and they talk all things movies and it's amazing and I totally recommend it. And it's very not safe for work as far as language and content sometimes. So if you're into that, that's great too. But he had an episode recently where he had this guy back on honor something or another he's a director and previously he had been kicked off the podcast for being a jerk and he might be like the only person who's ever been kicked off anyways he came on with like some of his people that were in a movie he's doing including Anne Heche and he and Anne Heche were like belligerent assholes and they were being so mean to Doug and I felt so bad for him and it was fucking terrible but if you want to hear something really 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 cringy I recommend that because sometimes it's fun to like hate listen to stuff you know I think it's the episode listed that Sandra Oh is the guest because she ended up being the only guest after he kicked them off for being like total douchebags. So yeah, listen to that, you guys. A couple other things that I'm really into right now. We uh, saw Arrival last week. If you guys know Arrival, it's that movie with Amy Adams that came out last year. It's an alien movie and 
it was so fantastic and poetic and moving and beautiful and just maybe like my favorite alien movie ever made. I don't even know. Like, I can't wait to see it again. I, I, I thought it was incredible. So I super recommend that. And then yesterday we got to go see Logan, the new Wolverine film that's out. And holy shit, you guys, that movie is brutal. Oh man, I I think rated R comic book movies are the wave of the future. Deadpool really paved a path for that and Logan was intense and amazing and I could not recommend it more. All right, so that's like a movie I recommend and I thought that I might kind of close out today with a top five list for you. So I read a lot of books because I'm very smart, but if you're like me, the question is always like, well, what do you read next? I mean, like I have a giant stack of books that I have not read, but that I own because I buy a lot of my books at the thrift store. Um, I'm always on the prowl for like really cheap paper books. I also have a Kindle, which I will read on from time to time, but I, I really, really, really like paper books. So I'm always out trying to find stuff like that or at half price books, but preferably from a thrift store for a dollar. So I thought I would just let you guys know my top five authors that I can go to if I'm ever in need or at a lack of suggestions for what to read. So my top five authors that are currently still writing, not like authors are dead because I love too many authors, but here's top five in no particular. Bill Bryson. So one of those books on my bookshelf that I was telling you about, A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson is amazing. And I'm going to recommend a book for you to pick from him if you don't know where to start. He wrote this book called A Brief History of Nearly Everything. And it is a brief history of nearly everything. I learned so much reading that book. And he's so funny and inspiring and witty and just, it's great. Um, So that's the book I recommend from him. You can also pick up A Walk in the Woods. I've seen it at thrift store a lot. And it is a fantastic adventure book that'll really make you want to walk the Appalachian Trail. Barbara Kingsolver. So B. Kingsolves is a fantastic author. Like, oh my God, amazing. And she just has such a great breadth of work and the different things that she covers. It's crazy incredible. Particularly if you're interested in anthropology, she kind of has a lot of books that would really, really speak to you just because so much of what she does is based around culture and the different interactions for culture and the implications of culture. So the one book that I could recommend, uh, besides all of them, any of them, is Prodigal Summer. Prodigal Summer is a very feminist book that really touches my heart and speaks to me and is just very empowering and also beautiful and very floral and fluid and so much nature in it. So that's a great book. Neil Gaiman. So Stardust, of course, we've talked about will be an episode that we cover, but really anything by Neil Gaiman is good. He's written a ton of books, like so much more than you've probably thought. I think uh, you've maybe seen Coraline or heard of that movie. Well, he wrote the book, bitches. So there you go. But the book that I would recommend for you to read if you don't know where to start, what to pick up, try out American Gods. American Gods is, uh, it's a superhero, super fantasy, beautiful book that you didn't even know you needed in your life. It's amazing. Check it out. And it's also going to be a TV show coming out later this year, I believe. JK Rowling. Okay, so you guys know JK from the Harry Potter series, of course, for sure. But did you know that she writes lots of other things? For real. So I I don't know if I would recommend The Casual Vacancy, which was like her first post Potter book. Um, it was good. Definitely for a diehard fan, read it. But it's a little sad for sure. But she writes this beautiful mystery series under her pseudonym. Robert Galbraith, and I'm going to go ahead and recommend that for you. Why don't you pick up the very first book? It's called Cuckoo's Calling, and it's lovely and amazing if you love a mystery book. David Sedaris. If you guys listen to This American Life or are a human being and you are alive, you probably know or have heard of David Sedaris. He does so many great things. He's pretty famous for like the Santa Land Diaries and a number of other stuff. But he is fantastic and he is funny. And if you want to read some nonfiction, but you're not sure what direction to go, anything on David Sedaris's bookshelf, anything, anything, anything. But I will recommend for you Me Talk Pretty One Day, because maybe me will. I don't know. But check that book out. 
All right, babies, I hope this mini episode is really tiding you over. So every other Monday, expect a big content episode. And then in between, we'll hit you with some mini episodes for some relevant content or just like, I don't know, whatever the shit we feel like talking about. All right. In the meantime, you can follow me at Morgandolph on Instagram. You can follow the podcast at BNB Cast on Instagram and Twitter. You can shoot us an email, beautyinthebe bee at gmail.com. You can find us on our website, uh, bnbcast.wordpress.com. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, online, all over the place. If there's somewhere else you need to find us, please hit us up. Our episodes are also available on our website if you need to download those to your cell phone or your grandma's. So yeah, get in your podcast app. Please subscribe to us. Please review us. Please tell your friends about us. And just thank you so much for being on this journey with us. Have a great week, babies. Bye-bye.